As an app developer that's been building his own apps for the past two and a half years, one of the most commonly asked questions I get asked is, what tech stack do you use to build your apps? And I've been telling people in my comments, don't worry, I'll make a video about it. And I've been putting it off for so long, but I'm finally making the video today. So without further ado, let me go into talking about the exact text that I use to build my own apps. And I will also talk about some alternatives that you can use as well. So I've been building my own apps for probably the past two and a half, almost three years at this point. And I've gone through a lot of variation. As of right now, probably for the past year or so, Nothing has changed and everything is staying completely the same. So let's start off with the front end side of things. So for the front end, I build all of my apps in React. So before getting into this video, I just want to say that I primarily build web applications. Every now and then in the past, I've done some mobile development, but I'm much more comfortable, much more proficient with the web development side of things. So I'm going to be talking about my web development stack to build out my apps, but I'll also give out some recommendations on what I would do if I were to build out my own mobile apps in the future again, which I kind of want to do because I have a couple of ideas in the back of my mind of things that I want to build. So in terms of the front end code that I write everything in, I use Next.js as my go-to front end framework. I've been using it since Next.js 12 with the pages router and then since Next.js 13 and 14 onwards I've been doing everything with the app router and overall it's pretty good. I originally had a background as a React developer so picking up Next.js was honestly pretty straightforward. There's since it's still very, very largely React based, besides a couple of other improvements very specific to Next.js, like server side rendering, as well as app routers, server actions, all of that. Stuff. I'm sure that I would like those frameworks as well. Really, I'm just settling on Next.js because it gained enough knowledge about it that like the opportunity cost to learn a completely brand new framework is pretty high. I have a lot of template code that I have for myself that I can just reuse across every single app that I build. So if you don't really have a front end framework of choice that you are already like very deeply invested in, don't jump straight into Next.js, just try out anything else that you want. I'm really only sticking with Next.js because it's good enough for me to just keep building apps with it. And I'm also deeply invested enough. All right, the cost to get out is pretty high. So I like Next.js, but I'm not one of those people that are like, Next.js is the greatest framework in the world. Nothing can beat it. No, I'm sure. There are pros and cons to every single framework. So it's just up to you to pick one, dive deep into it and really commit to it. And then I host all of my applications on Vercel, which is a hosting platform created by the creators of Next.js. I really love working on Vercel. It is just so seamless in terms of hosting my applications. The building and deployment process is super seamless as well. And I really love that it lets me not think at all about the infrastructure of my deployments, of my code, of my app. It lets me focus on building the product and it handles all the heavy lifting infra deployment stuff on its own. Now, I will say it can get pretty expensive once you start breaking out of the free tier because they charge a crazy amount for the bandwidth. But for better or for worse, I haven't really built an app big enough to cross that bandwidth yet. And now moving on to the back end side of things, I use PlanetScale as my SQL database provider of choice. And I run everything on a serverless architecture, which makes Vercel really great. Once again, I don't have to worry about spinning my own servers. As of right now, I haven't built anything out really doing enough heavy lifting to justify renting out some servers. But if I were to, I would probably choose something like Render. There's been a lot of great things about it. Some of my other developer friends and colleagues have used it as well and have great things to say about it. So if I ever had to do something that isn't supported on serverless, I would probably end up transitioning to hosting it on render instead. I know some of you are gonna be like, bro, you don't use AWS, bro, you don't use GCP. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I hate dealing with AWS. I hate dealing with GCP. If there is any type of software that I can use that, can, that lets me avoid using AWS or GCP, I'm probably gonna use it. I don't have much of an interest in learning it and I'd much rather just focus on building the product, letting the infra and the deployments being handled by some other service that I'll just happily pay for instead. So now taking a step back, in terms of all of my authentication, I use Clerk as my authentication provider of choice. I love using Clerk. It just works so nicely out of the box and they provide really helpful UI components to help users go through the authentication flow themselves. Highly recommend using Clerk. I've been using them for probably the past year, year and a half or so. I've used it across various applications no regrets, no desires to change to anything else. So taking one step back, now let's transition to talking about the database provider that I use. And this is the platform that I use, but I don't know if it's the best platform that you should use. So for myself, personally, I use PlanetScale as my SQL database provider of choice. I've been using them for a long time and I love them. Originally, the reason why I chose PlanetScale over other database providers is the fact that they used to have an incredibly generous free tier that had like a billion row reads for free every single month, which is so crazy. I never even got close to hitting the free limits at all. But just recently in the past couple of weeks, PlanetScale announced 
but they are getting rid of their free hobby plan. And now the cheapest option that Planet Scale provides is a $40 a month option, which is honestly really, really expensive. Now for the apps that I'm currently building right now, they make enough monies where I can cover this $40 a month cost and I've already built too much of the app around Planet Scale where the migration cost is a little bit too high for me to migrate. But because there's no free tier anymore, it's hard for me to recommend this to any new developer out there that wants to go out and build their own apps. And honestly, if I were to build an app completely from scratch right now, and I wanted to keep costs as low as possible, I would end up using Superbase instead. And I actually used Superbase in the past and I really enjoyed it. And honestly, I don't have a good reason as to why I ended up switching away from it. But Superbase, if you haven't heard of it, is an open source Firebase alternative. It's like a one-stop shop for everything you need. Database, authentication, serverless functions, everything you need, they will host all of that. And what's even better is the fact that they still have a very, very generous free tier. So if I were to do this completely from scratch where I had to build an app with no users, no revenue, I probably at this point would go back to using Superbase just because so much for you completely for free and they're super generous about it. So that is my recommendation. Now you may think that that is all the technology required to build an app, but wait, there's more. Hold up. One important part of building out an app is the analytics that you track on your users. How exactly are your users using your application? Where are they dropping off in your application? Analytics are so important for any type of product that you're building. And for me, the analytics provider that I use is PostHog. I've talked about PostHog in the past. I'm a huge fan of them and I cannot recommend them enough. They are an open source product analytics provider and they do so much for you. They have surveys, they have analytics tracking, they have like funnel step throughs, they have event tracking, they have A-B testing, feature flags. They truly do so many things. Because they do so many things at once, it oftentimes makes them like a jack of all trades, master of none. But let's be honest, if you're watching this video, your product is probably so early or you haven't even started building your product yet where you really need the best in class experimentation platform or best in platform. You probably just need something that's cheap, does a job really well and does a lot of things for you at once. And I think PostHog is a great choice for that. I use PostHog and all of my applications. I use them to see how many users are visiting my website every single day. How are the users of my website interacting with my applications? What buttons are they pressing? What screens are they going to? What screens are they not going to? How can I improve that user experience for them? PostHog handles all of that for me. And because they're open source, you can self-host it if you want, but they also have an incredibly generous free tier that you probably will not cross into their premium tier offering. Once again, it's a great product for anybody that's just getting started building out their own products or for any solo developer that just needs one tool that will do everything for you. Highly, highly recommend it. Honestly, if you were to ask me right now which framework I would probably use, I would probably go through and just absorb the high learning curve of learning React Native and building apps with Expo because I've actually never used that framework before. I've tried it like once or twice, but it wasn't too successful with it. But in the past, I have built apps with Flutter. I have built apps with Swift to build native iOS applications using Swift and Xcode. But right now, if I were to build out an application, I think the most important part for me would just be distribution across both Android and iOS. And with that in mind, I personally prefer using React Native over Flutter just because I'm much more comfortable with writing React code compared to Flutter code. But once again, I'm not a mobile app expert. I'm just somebody that's built like two or three mobile apps in his lifetime. But right now, if I were to choose, I would probably choose React Native. And the biggest reason for that is because a lot of SDKs and APIs, they have, they oftentimes have native support for like native Kotlin code to write Android applications, native Swift code to write iOS applications or React Native support, but take my mobile app recommendations with a grain of salt. All right, so that is my tech stack of what I use currently to build out my applications. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below.